Greetings everyone. In the comment section of my previous video, I saw a term that was being thrown around that is not really correct, and that is Watts RMS. It's not really anybody's fault because the term has been used in advertising and even by the Federal Trade Commission for quite a while. And you might pick up the manual for an old receiver or audio amplifier and look at the specifications and printed right there you'll see Watts RMS for example. You might look in a magazine and see that term used. What started this madness was back in the early 70s when the FTC came up with a standard for properly measuring audio amplifier power they used the term Watts RMS. Well that got the attention of electrical engineers who wrote in and said hey if you look at any text written by an electrical engineer, you will not see the term Watts RMS. It's not really a real thing. So after a few decades, I think around 2000, when they revised the audio amplifier testing procedures, they dropped Watts RMS and now just call it uh, continuous average power, which is more appropriate. Let's take a look at DC and AC voltage and how we measure wattage and how that's applied to audio amplifier power measurements. Take a look at how RMS is properly used and hopefully that will clear all of this up. So what is RMS anyway? It stands for root mean squared. If you go to Wikipedia and put root mean squared in, it'll give you all the mathematical background of how it's all derived and everything. You know, I am not a math whiz, I'll put that out there. So if you want to delve more into the mathematical aspect of that, you certainly go to Wikipedia and take a look at that. So anyhow, let's take a look at a DC circuit and how we measure the wattage. And for most of you, it's probably already pretty clear. So with DC, we have this voltage amplitude versus time. And of course, being direct current, the voltage is always at a steady point on the graph here. So if we have 10 volts, and I have a little schematic here showing a voltage source and a 10 ohm resistor, what will be the wattage dissipated in the resistor? Well, if you put 10 volts across the resistor and use the formula, voltage squared divided by resistance, you can see that 10 squared is 100 divided by 10 will give us 10 watts. Or an indirect way of calculating that is to determine what the current is. 10 volts through 10 ohms is 1 amp. So you take the voltage divided by the resistance and you get the current. 10 divided by 10 is 1. Then to find the wattage you multiply the voltage across the resistor times the current through the resistor and you get and you get the wattage and pardon me we have a bench marauder cat <laughs> as soon as he gets out of the way we'll continue here all right, the Snickers is moving on. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, anyway, so we have 10 watts. So now let's take a look at an AC waveform. As we plot it through time, constantly changing, no longer do we have that nice flat line like we did with DC. If we measure it at any instant point in time, we'll get different voltages. So how does it come about that we get a certain voltage of AC when it's constantly changing. So what they did is they put the AC waveform across the load and adjusted it until the load was dissipating the exact same power as it would as the DC voltage. And they called that the AC RMS voltage. And of course it's, it's proven mathematically as well. So how is that calculated? Well, it just so happens that 1 over square root of 2 
multiplied by the peak voltage will give us the volts RMS of the AC waveform. And that would give the equivalent power dissipation in the same load as the same DC voltage. Now let me be very clear, this is not RMS. This is the number we multiply the peak value of the AC waveform to get the value or the voltage in RMS. To be mathematically correct, this is the continuous average watts we're dissipating with the AC signal here. Because, you know, this is constantly changing. And if you take an instantaneous voltage and calculate the dissipation through that resistor, it's constantly changing. So we end up with an average here. So the FTC, after getting picked on by the engineers, they changed it to continuous average watts. And uh, that happened uh, several years ago. And with a lot of new amplifier specifications, you should see continuous average watts used now. Or just to make it simpler, just watts. Now, one side point I would like to make about this that doesn't necessarily have to do with audio amplifier power is, well, when the engineer is working with AC, they might have to consider the peak values. For example, if they have a AC waveform connected to something that has a very small thermal mass, they might have to consider this peak value and the peak dissipation because it is double that of the RMS value. Another example is, you know, when they're designing high voltage transmission systems, they have to design the insulators to handle this peak value. You know, be safe with that peak value rather than an RMS value because it's considerably more than the RMS value. Well, hopefully this didn't make it any more confusing. Hopefully it does make some sense of what's going on here. And I thank you for watching.